Hey everybody, it's Sam over at Scorpio Rising Astrology, and we're here with another weekly forecast for you uh, here on the YouTube channel. And let's get to the aspects. We've got some really fun stuff to talk about after our uh, crazy eclipse weekend, so let's get to it. Okay, so um, Monday the 22nd, we had a pretty uh, watery day. And when we look at the 22nd, the first thing that we see is that Mars stations in Pisces, or um, not Mars, I'm sorry, Neptune. Uh, Neptune and Mars are both in Pisces at this time. But Neptune specifically is one of the three outer planets uh, that we look for in astrology. And Neptune will be stationing uh, to go retrograde. And I know that a lot of you have been seeing the social media a uh, storm of memes that are saying, you know, seven planets are in retrograde, 12 planets are in retrograde, 50 planets are in retrograde. No, no, there are five, um, five of them. Still, five is a lot because we only use um, seven traditional planets plus the three outer. So five out of 10, that's half the planets um, that are moving uh, or appearing to be moving backwards. They have slowed down. We'll talk a little bit about what a retrograde is. And we have addressed that in previous videos as well. Uh, so Neptune uh, will be stationing in Pisces uh, and will be officially retrograding on Wednesday. Uh, then we have a couple um, not so hot aspects in the evening, but in the morning we also have some watery stuff as the moon in Cancer, which is a water sign, makes a trine to that station Neptune and conjoins Mercury and Cancer. So there's a lot of watery energy um, in, in Monday's forecast, and it's caught between a rock and an emotional place. It's is the kind of title that I've that I've deemed for it. And they're not necessarily terrible aspects, but they're going to give us just a little bit of pointed clarity. Oppositions can really go either way, and we have two of those in the evening on Monday. And so when we look at oppositions between Cancer and Capricorn, it's often in regards to self-care versus other people's opinions, um, being at opposite ends of the same argument, um, and feeling that distance, feeling that opposition forming on Monday evening. And we have a uh, poor, poor quality of sleep at active dreams because on Tuesday morning at 319, uh, the moon in Cancer will trine Mars. Mars is that planet of activity. Um, and so when we look at being active in the middle of the night, not necessarily great, but Mars's strength is severely uh, tempered by his uh, placement in Pisces, the water sign. The moon will then move into Leo at 8.33 uh, in the morning on Tuesday, which will be a nice shift after all of the watery, uh, watery energy on Monday, uh, and then will immediately oppose retrograde Saturn. So there's going to be this uh, kind of tendency to expose. There's going to be uh, kind of fact-checking that's happening on Tuesday morning and really making sure that you're logically thinking things through instead of the emotional flavor that has kind of carried through the weekend. And then Tuesday evening, we have this lovely sextile between the moon and Venus, who's retrograde, but she will be stationing direct this week. So it's a little bit more of a friendly energy, a little bit more of laughter medicine, a little bit more of kind of chummy chummy, elbow rubbing, aha stuff. Uh, and it's very, you know, it's very walking on our hands because we're, we're trying to make light of awkward situations. And that's kind of the energy of Tuesday is bringing forward that lightness, but still recognizing that like, crap, we're, we're still in the thick of it. Okay. And then as we move forward into Wednesday, we have poor sleep quality again, uh, just because the moon will swear Uranus at 1.33 in the morning, which is not super hot. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a rougher sleep uh, schedule at the beginning of the week, but that will, that will slowly start to uh, mend. On Wednesday, we have Neptune who officially retrogrades in Pisces. You know, ne Neptune is that planet of fantasy. Neptune is that planet of imagination, of getting lost in the ethers. Um, and to have that planet going retrograde in the sign of Pisces, for those of you who know your natal chart, look at what your Pisces house signifies and think of what that imagination going back and kind of redreaming what that looks like for you specifically. 
on Wednesday because of that moon square uh, to Uranus, Uranus, that planet of unpredictability, and then Venus stationing in Gemini, the, the big thing for Wednesday is that a rough night makes people dramatic. You know, a moon in Leo is a little bit more fiery, a little bit more temperamental, a little bit more um, extroverted. And so when that, uh, when that Leo moon gets triggered by all of this nighttime activity, there's going to be this really intense um, kind of irritability that's going to be felt through the astrological wavelengths. So compassion should be employed on Wednesday. That's definitely something that I think uh, we, should, we should kind of tune into because the night is a little bit rougher than most. However, Thursday, the sleep does improve which I'm thankful for. Um, and that's all really because the moon um, doesn't, have any, doesn't have any aspects um, overnight. It's just a Leo moon kind of doing uh, a Leo moon thing. And our first aspect is going to be the moon making a trine to the south node um, and sextile to the north node. So the moon on Thursday is really going to tell us, hey, it's time to let go. It's time to move on. It's time to, you know, just really dig into that heart space and say, uh, yeah, this, this, this stuff that I've been holding on to, yeah, we can, we can pitch it, we can get rid of it. I'm not touching it, I'm not looking at it. It's not benefiting me, so we're just gonna, just gonna clean house. And that's where Virgo steps in. The moon goes into Virgo um, on Thursday at 1:05 p.m., and that's when we really start to clean house. There is a little bit of resistance, though. Um, we do have a sextile between the moon and the sun, which is great. But then the moon squares stationed Venus in Gemini. Um, so Venus does station. Uh, however, uh, there is still this this really kind of harsh square happening at 1016 between Virgo and Gemini, so our mutable signs. It's kind of like, you know, I'm asking you to be flexible, but I'm asking you to be flexible in this area when you're flexible in that area and you're not willing to compromise despite the word still being flexible. Um, there is a selective flexibility that might get on people's nerves because uh, they're asking you to bend in places that you, do, you don't want to bend and you are in fact bending in places that they don't want you to bend. So there's, there's some boundary issues on, on Thursday night. So we're in integrating some of that flexibility on Thursday, but it's not necessarily gonna rub people the right way. And that's okay, screw them. That's what I say. Um, and that's what Virgo would say. Uh, so we have fair sleep uh, just with a little bit of an early awakening because the moon in Virgo will try and Uranus and Taurus at 5.43 a.m. Uranus is that planet of unpredictability, that kind of shocking potential of the outer planet. And so when that happens at 5.43, it's kind of like that, okay, I'm awake. Um, don't know why I'm awake, but I just need to be productive. I'm awake. And that's the energy on Friday morning. Um, unfortunately, Mars and Pisces does square the nodes. So we find that a lot of that sloth, a lot of that energy that would be moving forward but can't because Mars has been kind of schlupping it through uh, Pisces is, is going to square the nodes and make moving forward even that more difficult. Um, so we have, we have peaceful, but not peaceful. Like there's this, there's this sense that things are coming together, but also that they're far from complete on, on Friday. And then the moon will tr uh, sextile Mercury retrograde in Cancer, which will just kind of be like a a backwards lightheartedness, like you know, Virgo and Cancer do get along because they're both they're both concerned with protecting and optimizing. Um, however, Mercury retrograde is not always up for the uh, not always up for things being as expected. You know, there might be a little little bit of trickery afoot, especially because this is um, a mutual reception between Mercury and Cancer and the Moon and Virgo. The Moon is in Mercury sign and Mercury is in Cancer sign. So there's going to be this nice synergy, but that synergy will still have this retrograde component to it where you can't, like on Friday night, you can't necessarily dig deep enough to uproot the backwardsness is a, a good way to say it. So there's still going to be a little bit of potential for conflict there, um, despite it being helpful. Saturday is going to be the worst day of our week. Um, and Sunday will thankfully kind of come to our rescue a little bit. 
but I think we just really need to be aware of Saturday because there is what's known as a grand square happening uh, between all of the mutable signs. And we've been getting tastes of this throughout the week, but Saturday is going to be the, um, the pinnacle of that, especially in the morning on Saturday. Once the moon moves into Libra, we're gonna be free of all that energy. So after, after four o'clock-ish in the afternoon, when the moon goes into Libra, Saturday will start to become much more lighthearted, much easier. But Saturday morning, I don't know what you're planning on doing Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, but don't, just, just don't. Especially if it involves other people that you're not necessarily on good terms with, because uh, overnight the moon will oppose retrograde Neptune. Um, the moon will then trine Pluto and Jupiter, which are retrograde kind of backwards heavy planets. And then in the afternoon, we have that grand square where the moon in Virgo squares the nodes, and then the moon in Virgo will also square Mars and Pisces, who just squared the nodes on Friday. So there's this, there's this really intense friction from uh, 2.42 to 4.01 p.m. And that, that grand square formation is really going to be the toughest aspect of our day on Saturday. So if you would like to, if you would like to really embrace some of these lessons that you're being taught this week on Saturday, especially, I think the, I think the feeling, the universal feeling is that, you know, you do need to be flexible, but sometimes being overly flexible is a bad thing. And likewise, just because you are flexible in certain areas does not mean you are winning the game uh, because certain tasks demand that you are flexible in all areas um, or areas that you're not necessarily comfortable with. And so it's about feeling out boundaries and feeling about what is appropriate and what is not appropriate um, and really come to term, coming to terms with those mutable signs of the zodiac, you know, Virgo, Sagittarius, Gemini, Pisces. These are, these are the signs that tend to lack that filter, lack that uh, ability to say no, lack that ability to really put their foot down and charge in a, in a straightforward direction. They're very ambiguous by nature. And so the, that grand square really is lighting up all of those mutable signs. And we're really being asked, you know, what is it that we actually want? And where do we need to tighten up our boundaries so that we can actually move forward instead of getting stuck in this kind of desert of indecision? But then once the moon in Libra starts to come around, you know, Libra is that cardinal air sign. So we get some cardinality, we get some forward movement in the skies, and that's going to be really nice. The moon will then try and retrograde Saturn, which is the heavy backwards energy that we need, where we kind of fall back on that, okay, this is the way it is. This is the rational way to think about it. Uh, you know, we need to put, we need to put rules and stipulations in place in order to do these things. And that Saturn energy is very, very good for that. So I think after that four uh, after that four o'clock, we're really going to get into some good stuff, and then and then we start our big shift, which is Mars going into Aries. Um, now, what I what I'm going to say about Mars and Aries is that Mars will be in Aries, his home fire sign, for six months. Yeah, that's a really long time. So Mars is going to slow down in Aries station retrograde, go retrograde, and then continue to be in Aries until I think the first or second week of January. It's absolutely crazy. So for those of you, I know I've been telling my clients about this for a while, but this is it. This is what's happening. If you're familiar with your Aries house and your natal chart, Mars, the planet of action, will be moving into that space in his home fire sign. So it's kind of like we'll be cooking with gas. There will be a fire underneath your butt in that area area of life. And this is where I think everything will start to really reopen. It's also really interesting as I'm looking at, you know, worldwide communities and seeing when official reopen dates start to happen. This is, this is Mars saying, I've been cooped up for too long. Let me through, let me through. Um, however, the Mars retrograde around September, October timeframe will also be an interesting uh, second wave potential as Mars goes retrograde, that action is reversed. So that's something astrologically to look out for. So Saturday is action packed with a lot of interesting stuff. And I think we just need to respect that Saturday might not be the best time, especially in the early part of the afternoon and morning to do things that you would like to go well. But as we move into the evening, there's actually going to be this rocket boost that, that really propels us forward for a long time to come. And, and the, the, the puzzle pieces will start to fit a little bit better.
because Mars doesn't like to be in Pisces and has been in Pisces for a while. Okay, uh, we have excellent sleep conditions, uh, partially because the moon in Libra is trining Venus in Gemini. So Venus is now direct. Um, Venus direct is uh, an excellent thing. She's no longer retrograde. Um, and the moon is in her sign. So the moon is in Libra, in the sign that Venus rules, and making a trine, a positive aspect to Venus, who is known for her beneficence. To have that on Sunday uh, is going to be excellent. However, you know, we do have this moon Libra square, the sun in Cancer at 4.41 a.m. So my recommendation was Saturday, go to bed early um, and, and soak in the Soak in the sleep would be a good way to good way to say it. Uh, then we have Saturn retrogrades into a sextile with Mars and Venus, which I find are uh, Mars and Aries, which I find hilarious. Saturn, who's right at the edge um, of Aquarius, and we'll just put Aquarius right there. Uh, so Saturn in Aquarius will retrograde or move backwards into a sextile as opposed to Mars, the faster planet, approaching that sextile. So they kind of just pass like ships in the night. It's just a really quick, really quick acknowledgement of, hey, how you doing? Um, you know, Mars is fired up. Mars is in his own, his home sign and Saturn's retrograding backwards like, hey, I'm about to cause some trouble. And Mars is like, yeah, I get it. Go cause trouble. I'm about to cause trouble over here. So, you know, how you doing? But not really a not really sustained interaction. And then our last aspect is the Moon Libra square retrograde Mercury in Cancer. So off on a little bit of a sour note that won't uh, that won't really get better until the evening hours when we can kind of scrub that off. But Sunday night Sunday night Moon in Libra, I'm a fan of it. I think that that would be an excellent time to plan some fun stuff. Um, as well as Saturday, you know Saturday evening is going to look better once the Moon in Libra goes. Uh, and that'll be that'll be really good. Friday night too uh, will be kind of backwards, but still good for socialization. Okay. As always, remember that these forecast times are in Eastern Standard Time, so adjust them for your time zone. Uh, and I've put the exact planetary transits below in the description for the YouTube video if you do have any questions about specific transits, or if you'd like to tell me how last week was for you, or report on how this week's transits kind of affect you, feel free to use the comment section as well. If you would like to look at your transits a little bit more personally, we can always schedule a one-on-one -on -one session. Just go to my website, scorpiorisingastrology.com backslash consultations. Um, and also, uh, if you're interested in learning astrology, I just posted my full moon techniques class, which will be really helpful for this next full moon in Capricorn coming up beginning of July. Uh, so prep work for that and also a lot of other stuff to, suit, uh, to soothe your, your astrology sweet tooth. Um, but until next time, I will end our forecast video and may the stars be ever in your favor.